seeing some people on the level here that I've been seeing looking up to. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many people you can look up to, but there are a few of them. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I'll come back here with you, and I know they're going to make it squeeze in get closer together. So, Girls will love that. We've got to shut that way. Maybe we can get him. Let's get some of the women over here, so we're not all right. Okay, everybody come on in. Okay, everybody come on in. Last time I had a pack like this. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear the latest. We want to hear your, your latest Irish joke. Thank you, Can I see? Can I see? Okay, everybody. Ready? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. President. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. I did want to say something about this in the group picture here. If anyone's concerned when they go around the end, Frederick Marsh is a movie star. He made group pictures in Hollywood just would fight to get on the end. I mean, most people think the center is the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, somebody pinned him down. Why? And it's pretty logical. He said, look. They always begin in the caption, beginning from left to right. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> ever reads the whole caption. <laughs> 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 What did you mean? What, uh, why? Have I have a reputation for Irish stories? I don't <laughs> <laughs> I've been passing them on. I've been passing them on. Which haven't you passed on? The one about the. A little Irish priest that during the war was so anti-British that he was, his sermons were always dinging the British. And finally, the bishop said, "I never interfered, but we're at war now. There are allies. Certainly, you can stop uh, venting your wrath at the British while this is going on." So he did. Not a, another word about it. Finally, came Easter, and he had his Easter sermon that he. And he said, this morning at Easter, he said, I'm going to preach to you about the Last Supper. He said, it was the Last Supper, and he said, that the Lord stood up and he said to his disciples, one of you here this night will betray me. He says, I repeat, one of you here this night will betray me. And up spoke Judas Iscariot and said about Sinai, Galilee, you don't mean me. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, I don't think I can press it on because I can't put the twist on it. But, uh, <laughs> the accent. <laughs> well, it's good to see you all. Good to see you. We'll see you on the back. We were a bit tall. Well, it's always someone's Mr. President, we had just a little bit of parallel uh, result. We need to do one more if you don't mind. We need to do one more. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, I've had a very good time. Sure, my wife. My daughter. 
daughter Kathleen from California over there. And her daughter Sydney. Hello. Nice to see you. My daughter Anne. Anne. And her daughter is that Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> She's not going to see the cameras. <laughs> my son-in-law, Captain Hayes, and my daughters. Hello there. Lexi, to see you. And my son, Mr. President. David. Nice to see you. Jack Marsh, Mr. Secretary. Secretary. Hi. Hello. 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 And I'm John Bowen. Hello. Hello. I think you and you and I are going to work. Thank to Paul C. Miller, the recognized international authority on matters of military and diplomatic ceremony Paul C. Miller has devoted 45 years of service to his nation. A prisoner of war and twice injured while leading combat troops during World War II, he completed a distinguished military career in 1960 before becoming the director of ceremonies and special events, U.S. Army Military District of Washington. Through his leadership, countless White House, state, and other official events of worldwide significance have been executed with great skill and unparalleled precision presented at the White House on this day by President Ronald Reagan. I'm very pleased to be there. very grateful to you for all that you've done. I think I'd say thank you for a lot of miracles. Thank you, sir. I'd like to say one thing. The night you were elected, my wife said, thank God I live long enough to be a man like Reagan like the president. Bless you. Thank you very much. Here is the, the sanitation. Thank you, sir. I think maybe we ought to go back and get a family. Thank day. you. Paul, I've lost you. <laughs> that's all right. Great. Okay. That's this is the shortest Miller we have. Are you ready? ready? by the Senate for promotion to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army. Superior Service Medal to Robert R. Ivany. Major Robert R. Ivany, United States Army, distinguished himself by exceptionally superior service as Army aide to the President from July 1984 to June 1986. Major Ivany continually displayed superior leadership, exemplary foresight, and tireless effort, which were of paramount importance to the President and the nation. In this highly visible position, he routinely planned and coordinated 
numerous events of national and international significance, his role as the Emergency Actions Officer for presidential travel was accomplished with expertise and professionalism. Major Ivany served as the White House agent responsible for supervising the use of Department of Defense resources, supporting Commander-in-Chief travel throughout the world. His performance as the military coordinator for the 1985 Economic Summit in Bonn was particularly noteworthy and contributed immeasurably to the Office of the President and effectiveness of the White House Military Office. The distinctive accomplishments of Major Ivany reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Army, and the Department of Defense. Thank you. Sir, Major Ivan is departing to command the 1st Squadron of the 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment, Fort Bliss, Texas. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's been both a privilege and honor to, to serve you for the past two years. And I just want to say that uh, it's been an education as well, and I only hope that I can take with me to Fort Bliss all the traits of leadership and concern for others that, that you've shown here, so I appreciate it very much. I'd also like, just like to say thank you to my wife, Mary Ann, and our children. We have put up with a lot of absences and have been a very supportive family. And last, I'd like to give a, a note of appreciation to my parents, who uh, 40 years ago had the courage to leave Hungary and to leave Europe to uh, find a new life in the United States of America. And certainly, if they, haven't, if they had not done that, I would not be here today. Well, okay. listen, uh, now, how about all the family coming over and surrounding us here? Brian? 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 Where's Brian? Brian? Generation here can go oh, we get this. Maybe we can just get Ivany's first, sir, and then we'll get the O'Donnell's after Brian. that. Okay, come on. May I have you come in just a little bit tighter, sir? Thank you. Chris, <laughs> Mark, stay here. Brian? Okay. Later, Rob. Thank you. Well, thank you. I think it would probably want you and me now for a, a group of okay. one of the, the aides, second lieutenant in the cavalry. But I did have to remember that one of my first assignments in World War II was the handling of the commissioning direct from civilian life, from technicians and people on up through the writing and the directing ranks and pictures that were far above any draft possibility or anything, but would be willing to accept direct commissions in the military to perform some tasks in line with their, their work. And I thought about that when I was pinning these on because there I was, a second lieutenant, and I was printing even pinning even some of those on direct civilians, direct commissions to major or lieutenant colonel. And then I had to tell them how they wore the uniform and how to salute them, and then I had to start saluting them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I remember that. <laughs>